A hydrofoil half a meter long and two meters wide is placed in a seawater flow at 12 meters per second at 20 degrees Celsius. I want us to figure out the boundary layer thickness at the end of the plate and then figure out what the drag force would be with all three variations of turbulent flow that we could consider. That is, laminar to turbulent transitional flow across the plate, fully turbulent across the entire plate if it's smooth, and turbulent rough flow for a roughness of 0 0.0001 meters. So our hydrofoil, which is like an airfoil except for water, is being modeled as a flat plate immersed in seawater, where the velocity is 12 meters per second, and the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. I want us to figure out what the boundary layer thickness is at the end of the plate. It is half a meter long. And two meters wide. So we will start with a Reynolds number calculation at the trailing edge. Use the value of the Reynolds number to figure out if we use the laminar or turbulent equation for the boundary layer thickness. And for that calculation, we're going to need to look up the properties of seawater. For that, we will jump into table A3, where I see that seawater with 30% salinity is going to give me a density of 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter. And then I also want a dynamic viscosity. And that is 1.07 times 10 to the negative third kilograms per meter second. So a Reynolds number at the trailing edge is going to be velocity times our total length times density of our seawater, all divided by our dynamic viscosity. We have to do density divided by dynamic viscosity because we do not have a kinematic viscosity for seawater. Our velocity was 12 meters per second. Our length was one half meter. Our density was 1,025. And our dynamic viscosity is 1.07 times 10 to the negative third. That was in kilograms per meter second. So kilogram cancels kilogram, seconds cancels seconds, meters and meters and meters cancel cubic meters, giving me a unitless proportion. So calculator, if you would please, that's 12 times 0 0.5 times 1,025 divided by 1 1.07 times 10 to the negative third. Calculator says 5.75 E6. which is definitely turbulent, which was kind of implied by the fact that I had asked for the drag force for a variety of turbulent flow characteristics. So first up, I have the boundary layer thickness. And for that, we're going to jump into our turbulent equation for boundary layer thickness, which is delta over x is equal to 0 0.16 divided by the Reynolds number with respect to x to the 1 7th power. x here is at length, so that's delta is equal to length times 0 0.16 divided by the Reynolds number with respect to length to the 1 7th power. Because again, the x position that we're evaluating is at the trailing edge, so the x is L. That's 0 0.16 divided by the Reynolds number to the 1 7th power. 
And again, because 0 0.16 divided by the Reynolds number to the 1 7th power is a unitless proportion, whatever units I plug in for L will be what I get out for delta. If I plug in meters, I will get out meters, which is probably way too big. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. 0 0.5 times 0 0.16 divided by our Reynolds number to the 1 7th power. And we get 0 0.00866. meters or 8.66 millimeters. Then for the coefficient of drag for laminar to turbulent transitional flow, I'm going to use this equation. So 0 0.031 divided by the Reynolds number to the 1 7th power minus 1440 divided by the Reynolds number. That is again 0 0.031 divided by the Reynolds number to the 1 7th power minus 1440 divided by the Reynolds number. So I'm going to take 0 0.031 divided by the Reynolds number to the 1 7th power minus 1440 divided by the Reynolds number. And we get 0 0.003105. Just double check that I used the correct numbers. 1440, 0 0.031. We did. Hooray. Next, I can calculate the drag force. So, arbitrary arrangement of variables, we have one half times. Let's go with the density first this time. Times the coefficient of drag, times the velocity squared, times the area. My density is going to be the density of seawater, which we looked up. Coefficient of drag, we just calculated. Velocity is going to be 12 meters per second. And the area of effect is going to be 2 times 0 0.5 times 2 meters. It's 2 times because we have drag on both sides of our hydrofoil. So that's 1 half times 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter times 0 times 12 squared meters squared per second squared times 2 times 0 0.5 meters times 2 meters. Let's assume we want an answer in newtons and we can adapt to kilonewtons if we need to. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So kilograms cancel kilograms, meters cancels one of the meters, second squared cancels second squared. Square meters and meters cancels cubic meters, leaving me with newtons. So, 0 0.5 times 1,025 times 0 0.003105 times 12 squared times 2 times 0 0.5 times 2. We get a drag force of 458.3 newtons. For part C, I want us to determine what the drag force would be if the coefficient of drag were generated using the assumption that it was smooth turbulent flow across the entire plate, as opposed to laminar at the beginning of the plate and turbulent at the end of the plate. So the only difference between B and C is that coefficient of drag is calculated using this equation. So that equation is... 0 0.031 divided by the Reynolds number to the 1 7th power and 
that's 0 0.031 divided by that number to the power of 1 over 7 and we get 0 0.003355 Then we're going to take that and plug it into our drag force calculation. and we get 495.2 newtons. So I repeat the process one more time, except this time, I have turbulent flow with a roughness of 0 0.0001 meters. 0 0.00001 meters. That was four zeros, right? No, three zeros before the one and after the decimal. So for rough turbulent flow, we are discarding the laminar region entirely, and we are using this equation for the coefficient of drag. So CD is going to be 1.89 plus 1.62 times log base 10 of the length of the plate over epsilon, quantity raised to the negative 2.5 power. I have a unitless proportion inside of the log base 10 term, which means that everything is going to be unitless, which means that my coefficient of drag will be unitless. So calculator, we're going to take 1.89 plus 1.62 times log base 10. I will go looking for of the length of our plate, which was 0 0.5 meters, divided by our roughness value, which is 0 0.0001 meters. And then we are taking that entire quantity to the power of negative 2.5. I have to use a negative sign instead of a subtraction sign or my calculator will get mad. We get a coefficient of drag of 0 0.005733. And an alternative way to come up with that number would have been to use figure 7.6. On figure 7.6, I could have found the blue line corresponding to my proportion of length over roughness. That would have been 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.0001, which is 5,000. The line for 5,000 is right here. My Reynolds number is... 5.75 times 10 to the 6th, so I'd be using a value, oh, probably right around here. So that would intersect my blue line and give me a coefficient of drag, maybe 0 0.0055, somewhere between 0 0.0055 and 0 0.006. So that's an alternative method, but the calculation is easier than the Colebrook equation, so there's not much value in direct lookups from that chart. The chart is more useful for generalizations or by seeing how trends occur if our Reynolds number increases or decreases past a certain point. So one more time, we're going to do our drag force calculation with our new coefficient of drag. So we're using 0 0.005733 and 
and that gives us a drag force of Eight hundred and forty six Newtons. So the presence of just a little bit of roughness, bumps that are about a tenth of a millimeter tall on average, increases our drag force from almost five hundred Newtons to eight hundred and fifty Newtons. That almost doubles just by having a surface that has bumps that are an average of a tenth of a millimeter tall. So it's in our best interest to try to smooth the surfaces that are dragging against water, especially in applications where our velocity is relatively high. 